Hello, everybody. Okay. Hello, everybody. How we doing? Give me some likes. Let's get the chat started. Let's get the conversation started. Talk to me. What's on your mind? About politics today. What's in the news? What you thinking about? It's a beautiful day. Did I miss you, Garbage Can? I don't know. you talking a lot of shit. I'm not too happy. Where have you been? I saw you the other day. Or I saw you in a live the other... A few little bit ago. You ain't been hopping around too far. Let's go guys, give me some likes, let's have some conversation, chit chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm What do you mean you don't like my other account? This is my main account. My other account, my uh, Congress account, I barely go on that one except for official things and the others are all backups. So what are you talking about? The other account, I started it as my main, but I figured I didn't want somebody using that one on the record, so. The other one says Kimberly for Congress. That's my actual name. That's why it says Kimberly. That's my name. It doesn't have a different name. It says Kimberly for Congress. That's my real name. Rosebud is my name on here. Just like Garbage Can is not your real name. Yes, so you're conservative. What's the point? You're still an American. Make some common sense points, garbage can. I want to hear common sense. I don't want to hear bullshit. My policies are closer to centrist than they are leftist. 
except my social policies are extremely left. But my actual, my actual policies, like in D.C., are very much centrist. Common sense more than anything. My main issues are taking care of vets and trying to get people to pay, get to, to where they can pay a living wage so people can actually prosper. Bringing them the actual economy, growing it from the middle class out and from the bottom up. You don't like official political accounts? Well, get over it, fucker. I didn't, I didn't create that account to make you happy. Inflation was caused by the pandemic and now the corporations are jacking us. It's not real inflation and if you'd look into it, you would know that. But you don't want to look into it. You would rather sit here and argue over bullshit. Try to blame it on the president. You know damn well that the inflation is caused by frickin' COVID and then these companies never lowered it. The same prices we paid during COVID, the jacked up prices we had to pay when people were sick and we couldn't get things from one place to another, it's the same damn frickin' prices we're paying today. They never went down. In fact, they're still going up. I paid 30% more on my grocery bill. That's not government. That's corporations jacking prices up. So Garbage Can, explain to me how that is something that Biden or the government caused. You want to hang your hat on capitalism, but when capitalism turns its back on you, you get upset about that, right? I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. You can't curl up and cozy up to the monster, and then when it turns around on you, get upset. Okay, Biden is corrupt. You get, you get a mute for lying. If you actually want facts on here, you're going to ask questions and you're going to give opinion. You're not going to come right out with lies. Well, garbage can, evidently you want capitalism because you're on the right. The right wants total capitalism. They want everybody to pull themselves up by their bootstraps, right? Isn't that what we're always arguing against? Stop telling people to pull themselves up by bootstraps or the, that are damn nailed to the floor? That's my issue, man. Stop telling people to do the impossible. When you know your ass can't do that shit, why are you telling someone else to do it? Why we got people in this country that have a master's degree and can't get by? Why is that? It ain't because they don't want to work. Because they certainly busted their ass off to get that master's degree. So explain to me why they can't make it. Or get your ass in the box. Arguing with me over through the cheap seats. I well, let's get down to it then if you want to know what it's all. I have a math I have an associate's as a legal assistant. I have a bachelor's in IT. And I have a master's in political science.
You think the market is saturated with degrees. They don't need smart people in politics. They don't need wise people that can actually tell you about economics or help you with IT issues. You think that people don't need people like that, huh? You want blue collar workers. In other words, you want people to bust their ass off, break their back, and hurt themselves. I'm making it because I'm a survivor, Cartman. The fact that I actually did not decide to abandon everybody else in my life, and I stopped and helped those who are disabled, raised a disabled child, helped other people, that's why I'm not wealthy. That's why I haven't quote-unquote made it. Because in spite of me actually doing all the things that I have done to be successful, I chose not to leave everybody else in the frickin' dust. So I stayed to help my kids, to help the family, to help everybody else. And that meant I couldn't work or I couldn't move forward in other ways. Well, yeah, Cartman, so how many disabled people were you taking care of as you made the six figures? How many, how many people were you actually helping while you were actually moving forward? And how many disabilities did you personally overcome while you were doing that? garbage can give me a fucking break you do not take care of 63 people there are not 63 people living in your house depending on your income that you are taking care of right now that is bullshit I'm calling it right now You're a supervisor. When you go home and lay your head on the pillow at night, how many people are you taking care of in your house? I'm not talking about your damn job. Right, garbage can, that's four. How many of those four are disabled and can't take care of themselves? And need 24-hour care? Or, or close to 24-hour care? Okay, so your wife is kind of out there, so you can't work. Because you have to stay home and take care of your wife and kids. That's what you're saying. That's what I'm asking you. How, who has to stay at home and can't work because they have to take care of others? Right. So what I'm saying is, if you couldn't bring home the bacon because you had to stay home and take care of a disabled child that needed care all the time, or you had a, a disabled spouse or something like that, how would you be able to make that career? How would you be able to bring home that money if you had to stay home and take care of somebody else? If you had a child that was autistic, or you had a child that had developmental delays, and you can't actually 
take the time off to go to work because you need to stay home and make sure that that child has their needs taken care of or that other people can't watch them because their developmental delays are too much for others to handle. This is what I'm talking about with all the callous people out there that say, go get a job. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Right, you'd have to employ a caretaker. Well, see, some of us didn't employ a caretaker. We had to do it ourselves because we didn't have the money for a caretaker. So even though we go back to school and we get the education and we have the ways and means, because we don't want to leave somebody in the dirt and just leave them, we can't go out and work and move up that corporate ladder. So some of us struggle because we actually don't want to leave others behind. So the idea that everybody in this country can make it, all we got to do is pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, right? All the garbage we listen to these conservatives tell us that is nothing short of more garbage Because nobody actually takes the time to discuss the real issues of today. Right? We're not talking about the real issues. About mothers or parents who can't go to work because they have a child that's disabled. And that disabled child needs so much supervision or attention, they can't go to daycare. They can't go to a regular school. Or they can't, they go to school, but the parent has to be there from the time they get on the bus to the time they get off the bus. And they, the parent has to be there any time they get out of school so that, they, or that there's a problem with the school. Really? Really, garbage can. Can I get some of those digits? Can I get some of those um, assistants, please? I love how you just think that there's just all these automatic funds that people can reach out in and get help with. Right, you're not educated in that area. But aren't you one of those conservatives that gets up and says, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. The only reason you're not successful is because you're lazy. Right? The only reason you're not out there making your six figures or whatever is because you don't want to work. America is the honeypot of everything, right? This is why people say conservatives are full of shit. Right. This is why people say conservatives are heartless. This is why people say conservatives need to go pack a fucking lunch. You know what, Garbage Can, you really don't have any idea. Because these programs that you're talking about are state-funded. Do you know what that means? That means that if you're in a red state, you ain't getting funding for shit. That means that if you have a state that is ran by a conservative House and Senate, and a conservative governor that thinks that you need to pull yourself up by your supposed bootstraps, hi Barbie, then you don't get shit. That's what that means. So if you happen to be in a blue state, which I am, and I still never got that any help like that. Well, you know what? They might be headquartered in red states, but you're not looking at the actual program. Ask the friend that goes through that program what they have to do. Does, does their, does their uh, loved one have to be on Social Security? Does their loved one have to fill out certain paperwork? What, what, is, what are all the requirements that they have to meet? They have to meet an actual income requirement. They have to actually meet a home requirement. There are a ton of things that you have to meet as, as a whole bunch of damn regulations 
they don't make they don't make all these regulations for big corporations though but they're gonna make them for you because you're disabled and you have to jump through all the damn hoops I love how conservatives think they just know everything But if you're making under six figures a year, you can afford to hire somebody to take care of your kid. Some of us barely make five figures a year. The most I've ever made in my entire life was 31,000 a year. But yet, how often do you see me crying about money on this app? Oh, I'm sure your employees pay for it somehow, if you actually sat down. They either pay through it through their deductibles on their health care, they pay through it through something, because ain't nothing fucking free. And you damn well know that shit. Alright, you go ahead and check it out. Because here in Pennsylvania, that shit ain't floating. I know dozens of uh, autistic parents with autistic kids. They can't work like that because their kid needs so much damn attention. And jobs will not put up with you having to leave in the middle of your job to go take care of your kid that just had an episode in school. So the idea that that parents can just go and up and lift off and go take go take care of a disabled child in the middle of a work day and not lose their job. It's a little bit disingenuous. <laughs> you know what? If you keep your tongue in check, I have no problems having a conservative friend. Although, I, if you want me to, you to be my conservative friend, you're going to have to change your name. Garbage can juice can't handle it, man. I mean, I don't care if you make it... Um, I'm the trashy guy or something like that. But garbage can juice, that almost makes me nauseous even reading that word. <laughs> I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Uh, Western PA, Big Fish. Um, uh south of Pittsburgh in District 14, the six counties in that area. I'm running next year. Um, but yeah, um, and that's why I tell people, I don't run as a liberal. My, my um, social politics, my um, the social issues, I'm very liberal. But when it comes to actually working for people, um, when it comes to actually solving problems, I'm more of a centrist. I want to sit down and solve and, and come up with solutions, you know? So, um, that's how that goes. I'm uh, I'm actually in a red district right now, so I mean, we got to be able to come together, talk to each other. If I get elected, it means that I was able to talk to people in my district to a point where I dropped an 18 points conservative lead.
I did. I did. Well, he uh, he's still my son, but he's 35 now, right? So, I mean... I did, but um, I'm all, I also have disabilities that um, I've been able to conquer and work through. But because I had to conquer and work through them, I couldn't work for a while. And so I am also on disability. Although I work as often as I can, even though I get disability. Um, yeah, my son... My son was born in 1988, so, um, and back then, when you had an autistic child, they didn't really know a lot. All they knew is that you had to give them the, um, you know, the, the skills that they were missing to help them acclimate. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, it's nice to hear it because most people don't give you those props. They just think that since you don't have a work history, that you just, you don't want to work, you know. And, uh, so, my son, the whole time I was raising him, I had a hard time keeping or getting work because if he had an episode in school, or if, or if something happened, I had to go to school and take care of it because sometimes some autistics, not all autistics, but autistics that aren't um, higher on the spectrum, sometimes they have oversensory issues, and so you can't get them to calm down very easily. And so they would have to call me and say, you know, your son's having an issue, we really need you to come and get him, da 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 da, -da. And so I would have to leave work or whatever I was doing. Well, most jobs don't put up with that. And those that do don't pay for shit. So, um, you know, I raised him and he's got some behavior problems. I have, I have to admit, but he's a good guy. That's where he's going to be going when he gets out. He's, um, he's actually in prison right now. Unfortunately, I had to put him there. But the safety of everybody had to come before my love for him. The safety of children. And so, but he's going to be getting out soon and he's going into a facility. So, um, that way people will be safe. And then I don't have to worry about it. But, um, but yeah, he's a good guy. He just, he doesn't understand, you know. We have to take care of those that are mentally not fit to be on their own. And uh, when that happens, and if shit hits the fan, we got to take care of it. Even when it hurts. And then, of course, I'm freaking half cock crazy, you know that. Only I can admit that, right? Yeah. Well, after I had my son in 88, I had another one in 96 that died uh, four days old. So that kind of messed my brain up a little bit.
Yeah, it was a long time ago. I don't get upset, except when I reflect. So, um, I have a baby book, so if I really want to reflect, I can open that up and do all that. But It was a long time ago, so except when I reflect and I think back on it, I don't get upset. But that kind of thing sticks with you for your whole life. You just get used to it. And then, uh, by a miracle, because I wasn't supposed to be able to have any more kids, and I had my tubes tied to for my own health, in 2004, I got pregnant. And, uh, I don't know how this damn life turned into a personal conversation. That's kind of messed up. Anyway, we're going to get off of it here in a minute. Um, but yeah, in, uh, 2004, even after I had my tubes tied, and I was homeless at the time, it was pretty freaky, um, I got pregnant. And so... At a crazy, nutty time in my life, I ended up living in a van with my boyfriend in Florida, homeless, pregnant, and uh, I decided to try to keep her. That was my personal decision. And uh, through all the miracles, that uh, I have in my personal beliefs. She graduated high school this year. So, uh, that's pretty freaking awesome when I think about it like that, you know. But, uh, you know, when she was born, she was born to a mama and a daddy that had nothing but a van and hopes and dreams for the future, you know. Now, with all that wonderful, um, after I got, got us settled, she was about five or six months old. Postpartum depression hit me like a dog, man. Like, bit me in the jugular postpartum depression hit me so bad I couldn't even be I couldn't do anything I ended up in her daddy watched her while I ended up going to a, a day center I had to go through to a mental hospital at a day center I went home every night but I had to go there for treatment for a year and a half. That's how messed up my mind was. And I guess it was kind of like everything total. Like after Dylan died in 96. And then I kind of recovered after a, long, a while after that. And then the postpartum depression in 2005. Yeah. <sighs> I not I think my brain turned to jelly, right? And that, that was when my complete recovery started. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm not, I don't, I don't cut on myself or nothing. It's not really something to look down on yourself about. It's just that you look back and go, damn, life was not all a bowl of freaking cherries, right? There were some really hard times. That's kind of the way I look at it. And, uh, but ever since then, you know, after I had her, I got, I got into recovery and I started getting my mental health back on track and getting a proper medication I needed. And, uh, while she was growing up, I got my shit together. I went back to school. I got my bachelor's. I got my master's. 
and I fell in love with politics. I fell in love with Obama and his talking points and his hope and his change and his dreams and his everything that he said he wanted for the country. I fell in love with that. Yes, I can. Yes, we will. We are not the red states of America. We are not the blue states of America. We are the United States of America. And I get chills saying it right now. That is my inspiration. That gives me hope. That makes me think that there is still some kind of freaking unity hidden in this country somewhere. Because it wasn't that long ago. That was 15 years ago. We are still the same people. We are still those. We are still that light. We are still the same. Somehow we've just forgot. We need to remember. We need to stop fighting. We need to be who we've always been again. We need to remember who we are. what happened to us. We let a demagogue who thinks he knows us better than we do take over our country. Thank you. I appreciate it. But we are all strong. We forgot that we're strong. We forgot that we, as Americans, none of us were wanted by anybody. We started as a country. If you weren't native here, you started out as somebody that wasn't wanted by anybody else. You weren't wanted by the country that sent you here. Or you were enslaved to be here.
And yet, we have accomplished more in the small time that we have been a country than probably any other country in the world has accomplished in the same amount of time. And so, what are we fighting for? Well, it's not depressing when you think of what we've accomplished. We were not wanted by anybody. As Americans, we were the wretched refuse. If you were not a slave or you were not native, you came here from a country that didn't want you. You weren't good enough. You were their leftovers. But what did we do? As those that were considered leftovers, we did amazing things. We built the Golden Gate Bridge, the Hoover Dam, I mean, every infrastructure in this country. Every, every single thing in this country that was massively built that you could look at today and go, that right there is astonishing that we did that. We did that. We came together in unity to build that. Everything that the Army Corps of Engineers has built, everything that our military has accomplished in a good way, when we go to other countries and help them fight disease, when we actually help other countries fight off hate, when we helped win World War II, everything that we have ever accomplished, everything that we've ever done, Those are things to be proud of. Even though we have a lot to be sad about, we have a lot to be proud about. And I believe that there is a way forward But we can't move forward in hate or cockiness or some kind of ideology that anybody is better than anybody else. We've allowed horrible leaders to take over our country. We've allowed people that say horrible things to permeate who we are. I guess I'm going to restart my life because I kind of ruined the whole day and playing with all my little boring talk. Okay.